Hi, my name is Gary, and um, well, to help me today explain this technique to you is my daughter, Sherry. And if you're ready, well, let's start. I'm going to do a French impression painting, impressionist painting, and um, first thing I've done here is I've sketched out, I've drawn it out on the canvas, and I'm putting a little bit of ready white. I'm just coating the canvas real lightly with ready white over the top. It's a nice light coat because when you work in impressionism, you have to work fairly fast, and you don't. You want to get some blending in, and it, and this allows it to blend a lot better. Also, uh, in on this sketch, I have a little girl. She's going to be standing here, and she's watching um, the boats on the water. I call this reflections. I have cut out of contact paper. Uh, her shape, peel the back off and I've stuck it on there. So that way there I can just paint with uh, total freedom all the way around it. Then I'll peel that off, you see, and then I'll paint her in last. Okay, let's get started. First colors I want to use here, I want to get a sky in. And my sky, I'm going to take some white, bring out some white. I'm going to put just a little bit of alizarin crimson in it. And just a touch of yellow ochre. Just a touch. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna go up here and get a little, that could be a little, it could be a little stronger than that. Let's, let's put a little more red in it. This'll do it. Okay, I'm gonna put a little of that across there. And I'm also gonna come across the water right where the girl's at with just a little of that same color. Now I'm gonna add some white, a little bit of yellow. Come down just below it, and I'm gonna put in an area, a nice soft area of, of that yellow. I'm gonna let that yellow just blend right on up into this uh, lizard crimson that I put up above. I'm gonna go a little stronger with that lizard. I'm just gonna pick up just a touch more of it. It needs to be, it's not showing up as well as I like. There we go. Now I like that. All right, we'll do it down here. And I'm going to put just a little bit of that yellow down in the water, too. Just let it go across real nice and easy. Bring it over here behind the trees. Now I'd like to get a little blue in it, so I'm going to pick up just a touch of phthalo blue. And, ah, too much. Here we go. And I'm going to put just a little bit of blue. I want to get a little blue in the background there behind the girl. And a little bit of blue behind, this is going to be trees back in here, but I'm just going to put just a little shallow part of blue, a little shallow blue back in there like that and tuck it around the tree there. And then also, I'm going to add just a little more blue to it, make it just a little bit stronger. There we go. Slightly stronger. And right on the horizon line of the water, right on the water line, I'm just going to wipe of that blue across there. Now, you notice how neat that is? See, I'm overlapping the girl, and I don't have to worry about it. See, I can overlap her, and uh, it's kind of an easy deal. Because when I get all through, I'll just peel that off, and we're right in business. All right, I'm going to add a little of that darker blue up in here like that. A little more down in here. Okay, we're about ready to get started painting. All right, I'm gonna show you something today. I like to show you how to use a sponge. A sponge is a lot of fun to work. This is just a, a plain sponge, a real one. And I'm gonna tap all of these trees. I'm gonna make a nice color out here. I'm gonna start with a blue, and I'm gonna tap my wet sponge. This, I've, I've dampened the sponge, and I'm gonna tap it down in here into the paint, and see if that's gonna be dark enough. Yeah, that, that'll be dark enough for a starter. Put a little of that color in there first, like that. Just just tapping it in there. Now I'm gonna go a little tiny bit darker. I'm gonna pull a little bit of more of this phthalo blue out. Tapping my sponge on the palette. Remember now this, the sponge is wet. Oh, there we go, now we're getting it. See, sometimes it takes more than once to load it to get it really doing what you want it to do. 
Now that's nice coloring there. Okay. And I'm going to throw just a little bit back in, back in the background here. Now while I'm at it, I've got to do some planning here. I want to decide where I want blues in this painting because I'm going to take a little bit of this sponge work and I want some blue over in here. So I'm going to tap some blue right up underneath where this tree is going to go. I'm going to take a little of it. I'm going to drift it down here in front of the girl and then kind of let it fade off. I want a little bit down here in this corner, like so. I'm going to take a little of regular blue this time. I'm going to use ultramarine or regular blue. And I'm going to come over in this corner here and I'm going to tap some of the regular blue. See, it's a lot different. The color's a little different. And I'll put a little of that over in here like that. I like that. See, what I'm basically doing right now is I'm just getting the base on here. And I'm doing it very quickly with, this, with the sponge. The sponge just works real good. I want a little variation up here in these trees, so I'm going to put a little variation there. Like so. Now, I can take your sponge and just put it down in the water like this. Squeeze it out a couple of times. Let it fill up. Squeeze it out. I'm going to wipe it off. Okay, now I've got a fairly clean area to work with. I'm going to, I'm going to rotate the sponge a little bit to a clean area. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of white and a little bit of alizarin crimson. And I'm going to tap them down. Now, when you mix these colors on your palette, you don't have to mix them just perfectly solid. A little uh, loose, uh, I recommend just, just a loose mix is plenty good enough. I want to get a little of that pink in there. See, I'm going to intermix just a little bit around, down towards the bottom of the trees, maybe just touch here once in a while here and there. That's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to want some pink. I'm going to want some pink areas right in here, so I'm going to add just a little more alizarin to it, make it just a little bit stronger. And I'd like a nice pink area in here like this, old, kind of overlapping the water, where the water's at. Bring a little pink over here like this. See how neat this is? This is really easy. This is easy and fun to paint this way. You can paint with total abandon and freedom. Because I'm going to literally block in everything that needs to be blocked in. Now I'm going to want some orange. I'm going to put some orange in there. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of this orange. Tap it down on my on my uh, palette, and I want to. I'm going to get just a little orange down in here like this. Just smack a little tiny bit over in there. Now the rest of the colors I want in there are going to be fairly dark, so uh, I'm going to go in here and pick up just a little bit of rust color, and I'm going to make it with uh, burnt sienna. I'm just going to take some burnt sienna, and get a little kind of a rust color. Tap just a little in there for variation. Little around in here like this. And down, way down in the corner here later on, I'm going to go darker. I'll maybe put just a little rust up here where the tree is going to be. Now, I need to get that tree on there. For that, I'm going to uh, underpaint it. I think I'll just use a um, ultramarine blue. I'm going to go in. I'm just going to let the rust uh, mix right on my um, sponge with that. Because that'll, that'll give me kind of a... A, a, a blue that is sort of grayed, sort of a grayed blue. See, that's what I want right there. I want that grayed blue look. Could be a little darker. I'm going to go just a little darker. Here we go. There. I'm liking that pretty well. And up around here. So, now a little lighter blue. I'm going to pick up a little white here and go with a little lighter blue on the outsides and then I'm ready to pick up my paintbrush and we'll start filling in and I'll show you what we can do here to make this all into a nice nice little painting now I'm going to fill up this corner with a darker blue and before I before I move though I think I'll grab some green I think I'll work some green into this so I'm going to pick up a little green still tapping it on on my palette and down here, I'm going to, yeah, I like that. See, it, it needed that green. It needs that little touch, touch of green there to, a little bit here, like that. Drift a little off onto here. Okay. <clears throat> now, not too much now. Now, that's good underpainting. That's, that's all I'm going to do right now for the underpainting. I'm going to put the brush, uh, the sponge away. I'm going to pick myself up a brush, probably a liner brush here. Oh, 
let's see, I want a little bit of, uh, I'll use a little burn umber here. I'll just, um, I'll use some of this uh, burnt sienna and I'll put a little green with it. This make kind of a, a burn umber. To be honest with you, I forgot to put my burn umber out on my, uh, oh, heck, it's right here. Don't have to worry about it. There, now I've got burn umber. There we go. And uh, I want to start here by making um, some branches or trees, you know. So I'm gonna, first I'm going to put those in. I'm going to brush in a few of these branches, come in here like this, draw it out. If you use plenty of water, make a nice uh, loose mix of paint, nice wet mix. Just come in here like this, just whip out a few of these little branches underneath here like so. Looking good. All right, now we're ready to start. Um, well, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll go ahead and put the sailboats in too. I can put some, I'll put the sailboats and do a little detailing here. I'm going to show you an easy way to do that. Here, I've got a palette knife here. I'm just going to take a little white. I'm going to go over here on my fresh palette. I'm going to spread a little white out. And to load my palette knife, I just go like this. I stand my knife right up on its edge and I drag through it and I get a little bead right out on the edge. I'm going to come in here, I'm going to lay my knife on there, and I'm just going to drag a little water line there, a little distant water line off, like so. Then while I've got this going, I'd like a little ripple down through here. See, we're going to have some boats in here, so I'll put a little ripple line. Not, you know, not too strong, not too fancy. Something like that. Okay, uh, you can even take the edge of your knife too if you want to and you can scratch I don't know if this will show up on camera but you can actually scratch some little tree branches up in there if you want to okay now we're ready to put those boats in I'm, that's what I'm going to do next I'm going to put the boat in I'm going to grab a little flat brush here wet it and uh, come in here and I'm just going to pop a little sail in like so Come in here and pop another little sail in like so. If it picks up a little of the background color, so what? Doesn't hurt a thing. Make it a little stronger. So that it shows up. And right below it, I'm going to put a reflection right down into the water. Now if I come back in with a, with a um, liner brush and pick up a little bit of burnt umber, and I'm going to use my mall stick to steady my hand. I can put a little uh, mast on here and put a mast on here. This, this, this painting right now has more meaning to me than it did just a week or so ago because just before we started to film this series, I became the proud owner of a, <laughs> of a boat myself. I'm anxious to, got some work to do on it. It's one of those fixer-uppers. But I'm going to, it's built out in the New England state someplace, and it's a catch, 25 and a half foot catch. It's a pretty common neat boat, but it's got a lot of TLC required. Before I can think about sailing it. But that will, my day will come. All right, I like that so far. Now to make that, make those, uh, to make those uh, reflections, just a little more realistic down in here. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put that in there first. Then I'm going to just take a soft brush, make sure it's dry, and I'm just going to come across here like this, and I'm just going to whisk it. Just a little tiny, tiny bit to put it out of focus. Like that. There. Now, I can take my liner brush, and I can go in here and pick up a little bit of white, and I'll put a little cut line right at the water, a little ripple line. Be awake. Awake, actually. A few more little ripples down in here like this, crossed, just to make it look like... There. Now, later on, I'm going to let that dry a little, and as I'm going to go on to something else, and as this dries, I'm going to probably come back in here now and punch up these sails. I'll make them just a little bit lighter, like so, and a little bit lighter maybe in the water. That's close enough, though. You can see them. 
All right, let's go to work on the trees and et cetera back here in the background. I'm going to take a, um, just a pointed round, up, up, um, they call them cat's tongue sometimes, but they're actually a filbert brush. That's F-I-L-B-E-R-T, filbert. And I'm going to take this little filbert brush and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to start with all these colors, all of the colors I've, I've used up till now. Start with a little pink. I'm just going to make me a whole batch of colors over here on this palette. I'm going to make some pink over there. That'll work good. I'm going to make maybe a little orange. Take a little orange and pull it over here. Make me a little orange. Just something of everything. And I just start out in here and start making some individual strokes. Like so. Now first you can put the strokes and you just loosen it up. Keep those, keep those strokes nice and loose like so. Uh, it's kind of important to get a few up here in the tree. We'll start working some of this lighter color up into the tree. See, just use some crisscross strokes. Almost like dots, practically. We'll pull some of this nice little color down in here. See how fresh that looks? Now, uh, that's, that's one of the advantages of, of acrylics is this, the back that I've already painted is already starting to get dry, see? Now, this is harder sometimes in oils to do than it is in acrylics because the oils tend to uh, stay loose and uh, wet and then when you try to put details like this just the colors kind of mix here they stay pretty fresh you see this acrylic color is just laying in there real nice and fresh over the top of uh, what I previously painted so here we go we'll put some lighter I'm gonna get introduce some lighter colors see some nice little highlights and stuff see how it's just kind of bringing that out now it's really given an impressionistic style. I'm going to go to a, I'm going to use a little more of this color, get it dashed around here a few places. And then I'm going to go to a, um, a real nice blue. I like to take a little bit of blue and bring it out here on my palette, mix it with some white. <clears throat> I like that color a lot. Ooh, look at that, isn't that nice? That's just really fresh, almost like a turquoise. It's pretty. Okay, well, We'll gather a little of that. See, so you can work real fresh colors when you're working in this style. You can put nice, fresh pastel colors, soft colors, one up against another. That's a nice color. I'm going to use that some more. I'm going to bring some of that down here in the base and kind of tuck the base of my tree in a little. See, bring a few of those strokes down in here like this. Keep working it over. Oh, that's looking fine. I'm happy so far. Okay, I'm going to grab a little white, and um, right where the girl's going to be, she's kind of right in here, I'm going to put some light in here on one side of her, like the light's coming in and hitting her from the front. And then behind her, down here, I'm going to use a little of that rust color that I made out of uh, burnt sienna, and with a little touch of red added to it. And I'm going to put just a little of that in here to kind of indicate sort of like a shadow for her. I like that color so well, I'm going to add, see, while you, while you have the colors on your brush, you can just dance around. I, I know the cameramen just love me because I'm all over the place, but, but um, it's, um, it's the way to paint it, you know, just try to go um, wherever you feel it. You, you, you can stand back actually and look at the painting and say, oh, I need some here. So you just go up there and you throw a little in there. And uh, if it's wrong, paint something else over the top of it. See, this is starting to come together. I like it so far. All right, I've got some um, kind of a base in here. You know what would look good over the top of that? Let's take some orange. Take a little orange, and I'm just going to go right in. Look at that. Look how it just freshens up that area. Makes it just look delightful. Okay. Now, isn't it neat? Isn't this a fun way to paint? Tell you what, you can do it at home yourself. You just give it a try. You'll have fun doing this. It's one of those types of paintings where I, I, I call them goof proof. You can just, uh, you know, you can paint this way and you never have to worry about making mistakes. Mistakes are easily covered. If you do make a mistake, it's pretty hard to make one in the first place. As long as you keep your colors kind of fresh and put in the right spots, not, don't get too carried away. Thing can look great. 
All right, we need some green. Let's start working some green down in here. Also, I need some lighter colors over in here. First, before I put the green in, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some white. And I'm just going to put pure white on here. And when it gets over here, it'll kind of mix around into the pinks. You see, those pinks are still wet enough that it sort of picks it up so it doesn't stay real fresh white. Work a little down in here like this. I get a lot of cards and letters uh, from uh, previous uh, series that I've done from older people that tell me, they say, oh, Gary, you make it look easy on television. No. But I'm so nervous. I had a heart attack or I had a stroke and it's left me with a little tremor. Well, I've got to be honest with you. The same thing has happened to me. I didn't used to have. I do have a bit of a tremor and it was a result of a heart attack. But what I've learned is one way you can work on it is you just take and hold your hand. Hold your own hand like this and just guide it. Listen, we just got a few more minutes left here, so I'm going to have to put the hair dryer to this. And I want to I want to dry this and get this good and dry, and then we'll peel the girl off, and we'll go from there. In fact, I can go ahead and peel the girl off now, show you how it's done. So you just peel her out. Now I've got her shape there, and we'll come back and we'll, um, we'll, we'll uh, paint her in. But I do have to dry a little bit first. So I'll be right back. Okay, this girl is quite simple, if you make it simple. Uh, I'm going to show you something. I'm just going to use a little um, round brush, and um, I'd like a little flat one. Oh, here it is. It's in the water. That's why I couldn't find it. And I'll just take this brush, and I'm going to start out by taking a little bit of burnt, um, excuse me, uh, alizarin crimson. I'll take a little bit of alizarin crimson. I'm going to use my mall stick. And we have a light source we determined a long time ago that the light source was coming from this side. So I'm just going to go in here like this, and you paint her dress just right straight down in nice straight strokes, exactly the way her dress would be flowing in, in, in reality. Just come in here like that. All right, we want just a little bit of, of uh, shadow, let's say, behind that arm right there. Maybe a little going right down her arm. She's going to be holding a basket of flowers. Let's give it a little back in here. Let's get a little around the rim of her hat. And since the light starts coming that way, half of her hat would probably be in the light and half would be dark like that. Now, while it's, before that has a chance to dry, just take your brush, wash it out. Allow the, allow the paint to stay wet. Just go right in here and pick up some white now and start on the white side and see when you start over here, this is going to be the lightest. And as you get over towards the pink, you see what's going to happen? It starts picking up the pink. But if you keep your strokes just going right up and down like that, it looks just like a dress. You can put the folds in there all automatically. She needs a little highlight out here on the edge of her arm. See how that just works out just perfectly? We'll come in here and we'll get her back painted in. Okay, we can put a little, little bit of highlight on her hat. Let's just come around here like this. We'll just catch a little on the edge of her hat, a little bit around the corner of her hat. Now she's ready for detailing almost. I, I better give her a basket though. She's going to be carrying flowers. We better have it in something. So I'm going to take a little bit of burnt umber and I'm going to make her a little basket down here and a little handle where she's holding it. Now the rest of it, I'm going to use just a liner brush. I'm going to make a dark blue for her ribbons. I'm going to take blue here, and I'm going to put a little bit of that rust color in it. Um, that makes for a real nice dark blue. There, that's a good color. Okay, first thing I want to do is I want to give her a couple of uh, ribbons. So I go around here around her waist, and I'll run one ribbon down like this, and just kind of twirl it out, put another ribbon down here, twirl it out, Give her a little ribbon on her hat. Uh, we can make her any color hair you want. In this particular case, I'll tell you what, I'll make it, uh, well, let me see. I'll make it Sherry's, the color of Sherry's hair. Uh, we'll just put a, drop a little ponytail down here behind in the back like that. All we have to do is dot a few little flowers in there, and we're done. This is, we are finished. I'm going to take a little red like this and tap just a couple little flowers coming out down one side and a little yellow on the other side. And we could sign this 
And I think that made a nice little Monet. I enjoyed that. I hope you did.